Good morning. If we have any uh, people from the press here, you can come up and get the seats up front. Uh, my name is Linda Wagen, and I'm the Executive Vice President at the Ohio Chamber of Commerce, and I'm glad that you could join us today for this exciting announcement. Um, a few months ago, Andy Durrell asked me if I would take over leadership of the Ohio Shale Coalition, which is an organization that we started in June of last year. Um, the purpose of it, it's a broad-based statewide organization that's made up of businesses and organizations and individuals who are committed to ensuring that Ohioans realize the full economic potential of the state's shale gas reserves, including affordable energy and job creation. Um, there's a tremendous amount of excitement, as you all know, and anticipation related to uh, what we have in store here in Ohio as a result of the shale plays. Hardly a day goes by that um, there isn't some kind of an announcement in one of your papers or your, your um, radio shows that uh, say something positive about what's going to happen here in Ohio. In fact, just today in the Cleveland Plain Dealer, there was an announcement um, made by Baker Hughes, one of the nation's leading oil field services companies, about the plans that they have to build a 700-job regional headquarters in Maslin, Ohio. So given the mission of the Ohio Shale Coalition, we thought that it made sense to fund a study that evaluates the economic potential of the shale place for Ohio. The kind of, this kind of study, of course, will capture headlines. Uh, we expect that and we hope that. Uh, but it will also provide valuable information for the businesses who are planning the investments that will help create these jobs. And that's why we did the study and we'll continue to update it. So this morning, I am pleased to introduce to you the very impressive research team that we contracted with that has conducted this economic impact study for the Ohio Shale Coalition. And to kick off the presentation of our study, let me introduce someone who I think is probably familiar to many of you, uh, Professor Ned Hill, who is the Dean of the Maxine Goodman Levin College of Urban Affairs at Cleveland State University. Professor Hill. Thank you, Linda. Good morning, everybody. Oh, thank you. I, there's more coffee if you need a lot of response in the back of the room. Um, it's a pleasure to be here today. Um, as Linda mentioned, I am the Dean of the Levin College of Urban Affairs at Cleveland State University. Uh, being part of the study team was an absolute joy. It really is as close to the A-team as you get when it comes to uh, understanding uh, subsurface geology and the energy potential for the state. What I'm going to do is briefly introduce the members of the team. Uh, talk a bit about why uh, we were, uh, what we were asked to do, um, and then uh, three of the four other major researchers of the team are going to make short presentations. You're all, of course, welcome to stay after the question period as we do a fuller presentation for the coalition later on, but since you're members of the press, you may actually have other stuff to do, so um, feel free and we'll be available for questions after, afterwards. Uh, the members of the team, are first going to start with the two principal investigators. Dr. Irena Lendl is the Associate Director of the Center for Economic Development at the Levine College. She and uh, Andy Thomas, uh, who directs our Energy Policy Center, were the co-principal investigators of the project. Irena is a development economist. Andy is an attorney with a very deep background in energy law. And um, Andy has done a wonderful job of coordinating a lot of the details of the project, worrying on the policy issues, and Arena was the person that constructed uh, the input-output model we're going to talk about. We're absolutely, um, I, I won't scratch my nose when I see that light goes on, thank you very much. Um, I also want to introduce a, a person who played a, a valuable role, and that's Dr. Doug Southgate. Doug is a professor in the Department of Agriculture, Environmental, and Development Economics. But more importantly, he's the director of the Subsurface Energy Resource Center at The Ohio State University. Um, by the way, I've been told by our lobbyists we're the Cleveland State University, but I'll let that thing drop for a little bit. Um, the fourth member of our team, unfortunately, is ill. He's not with us today. And that's Dr. Robert Chase. Bob is the chair of the Petroleum Engineering and Geology Department at Marietta College. Uh, given what is taking place in the state, Having a resource such as we have at Marietta College is a blessing. Uh, they are, it turns out, world renowned when it comes to petroleum engineering. Um, and Bob's knowledge of the subservice parts of the state of Ohio is truly impressive and has been very helpful throughout this entire endeavor. Um, uh, Andy uh, will answer as many of the questions as he can, and at some point, you may have to punt to a phone call uh, to um, direct you to Bob 
and if you provide him ibuprofen, he may be able to respond. Um, so let's start with the, with the most important question here is what were we asked to do and by who? The Ohio Shale Coalition asked us to examine the potential economic impact of the development of shale-based energy on Ohio's economy. Frankly, uh, we had to do about a 90 degree turn fairly early in the project. Uh, early on, like most people in the state, we were focused on Marcellus development and in the early stages of the project, the, the, the potential of Utica became very clear and the report itself focused on the Utica play and the Utica play makes energy development in the state of Ohio substantially different than from other parts of the Marcellus region in the United States. Uh, the difference in the Utica versus Marcellus is Utica starts off, it's a bit deeper down. Uh, think of these geological formations as huge bowls that start somewhere in eastern Pennsylvania and they start coming up in the other end in central Ohio. Uh, and the Utica itself is not dominated by dry gas, which the Marcellus is. The Utica is dominated by a combination of wet gas, natural gas that gets vented off, but more importantly there's oil in there as well which means that the economics of the play is very, very different. Our team will speak about that in great in, in detail. We then um, went about building an input-output model uh, to look at what the impacts of the uh, uh, development would be. And frankly, we want to be clear, this is not a point estimate. Uh, we developed the model so that it can be updated continuously. The challenge that we've got is the data are so new and somewhat speculative about the development of the play that we built a model so it can be continuously updated. So we are very conservative in the way the model is forecast, we're very conservative in the way the model is built. The reason is that the known knowns are not, they're not a lot of them. The known unknowns, <laughs> there are a ton of them, and the unknown unknowns, we're going to figure out as this thing goes along. So what we really did was we concentrated and got all the hard data we could on the known knowns, on the known unknowns, we went and interviewed industry experts to figure out what the parameters were, and whenever we made a choice when it came to estimating, we took the lowest estimates at all times. Um, one of the largest challenges you have in the world of economic development is overhype, overpromising, and then when the delivery takes place, people get very disappointed. We believe that this is a very, very responsible and very conservative modeling effort. And I'm glad that um, Linda announced the 750 jobs, so let's see, for 12, 2012, we only have to go out and find another, oh, I don't know, 11,800 jobs out there, but I'm sure we'll do it before morning. Um, the other thing I, I want to say is that uh, the study team itself went through a large amount of interplay and interaction with it, within itself to make certain that the geology that we were talking about, Bob's specialization, supported what the economic numbers said. And the other thing that's very important is Doug's contribution where he looked at the downstream uh, or energy users um, uh, impact on the state, but we left those numbers on that impact out because it's speculative. But in the report itself, it paints a picture that we're now seeing played out on the road. So we do believe that what this effort is designed to do is to make certain that as more and more data comes in, we'll be able to paint a more accurate picture of what's taking place in the state. So at this point, I'm going to turn over the uh, podium to Andy. He's going to talk about the study assumptions, uh, and he'll pretend to be Bob Chase for a little bit. Arena will then follow with the modeling results, and then uh, Doug is going to talk about the downstream impacts, and I'll wrap up. And if Bill Rice gets um, disconnected, realize that, Bill, we did it on purpose.